You got to Pregame.com. And welcome back to Pregame.tv. Ken Thompson, a <laughs> senior moment with Dave Koken off the air, but uh, yeah, we'll get you the details another time. That's for definitely for another time. But Dave, good uh, on our college games last week. Pro game's always tough. I mean, I had the under in that Pittsburgh Monday night game, which looked good midway through the third quarter, and then Roethlisberger went off again. I'm not, I, I'm not having a good year in the NFL. It's my weakest game anyway, and, and this year it's been bad. Uh, fortunately, the colleges have been pretty exceptional, and uh, we'll see if we can keep it going this weekend. College football and your kicking butt in hockey. So. Yeah, the NHL's been good except for last night. And I just made a, 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 a bad Bad call on a game last night, but they're going to happen sometimes. Yeah, every I'm night. pretty happy. Every, no, no, you've been it's doing. Been, it's been a been doing well. five month and change run that's been uh, really good. Duke a nice 51 48. Uh, nice for me. Win at Pittsburgh. Yeah, I had it too. I had money line. I was fortunate there, but I I did like Duke and. Oh, you must have been thrilled when blew it blew it. Oh yeah, 26 yarder right there to win I, the game. And I'm the other way because I've got Duke <laughs> plus the points. Okay. I don't want overtime. Right. It's like oh good, this is I, and I'm I'm actually tweeting and said this is going to work out perfect. They're, they're they're moving the ball down. There's not enough time. There's no point to go for a touchdown. It's a chip right. shot field goal. The guy's a good kicker. Perfect. And then he misses the field goal. It's like yep. oh. God, and I don't like, oh, I don't want overtime with the dog, but it worked out okay. Yeah, I had the points, but I, I also got a little greedy there and uh, took the second half and, uh, <laughs> you know, it turned out on the money line to get a little money there. But uh, uh, you also nailed your college game, trying to remember what it was, but you kicked butt in it. and then uh, the On the show? Yeah. Uh, Louisiana Tech. Uh, La Tech. Which, Here. by the way, we'll throw out some props. I didn't know okay. until uh, the day of the game, but Scott Spritzer used Louisiana Tech for his game of the year. Oh, really? How do you, that's how do you win a game of the year. Oh, well, by like 6,000. When Spritzer subscribes to Dave Koch and then takes the game and makes it his game of the year. No, it's, moves, it's, it's, it's actually more a case of <laughs> great minds thinking alike, <laughs> even though they didn't know uh, they were on the same game. There you go. I love Scotty, but I won't, won't, I won't put him up there as a great mind. But uh, <laughs> he was a pretty good handicapper. But I, I, love, I love working with Scotty. But also, uh, uh, that game was one of my worst beats of the year. I happened to put it up on pregame. Over 69 and a half. Oh, well, Western Kentucky to, couldn't do anything. 59 to 10 with 14.09 to go. I need one freaking point. Twice Western Ooh. Kentucky gets inside the 20, Ooh. and they, they, none, neither time do they that's, go for a field goal because they're getting buried. Yeah, it was one of those. Uh, I mean, I, it closed at 68, so some people were fortunate, you know, just depending on where you played it, but to need one point for 14 minutes. Well, an interesting thing's happening with this game. Duke and Syracuse, this yes. is going to be one of those games where the public, the, the so-called squares mm -hmm. and the so-called sharps are going to collide because the square money is on the favorite, yep. which is Duke. The uh, sharp money has come in on Syracuse. Now, that doesn't mean anything, okay? That, that By no means does that mean that, oh, Duke's a winner or Duke's a loser and Syracuse is a winner because the squares are on Duke. That doesn't mean anything. It just It's just information. No, I, I, and, and Syracuse, to me, their defense has played very well, especially in the Clemson game. They look solid, and uh, they're at home. So all things point, but I like this Duke team. I just think this Duke team's got a better coach. I think Cutcliffe is a very underrated coach. You know, they're, uh, they're now, I believe they're now 15-1 and one in their last 16 regular season games. They are uh, That's pretty good. 13-3-1 and one in their last 17 against the number. That's pretty good, too. You know, they lost in the ACC title game last year. Yep. And then they lost their bowl game. But in the regular season, uh, since the loss last year to Pittsburgh, They've won 15 out of 16 games. Cutcliffe's an excellent coach. And where Syracuse get? Hey, look, you can exploit the Duke defense. It's not a good defense. No. But Syracuse doesn't have much of an offense. So, no yeah, it's not a game I'm on. And I just passed along the information as far as the, where some of the money's showing. There you go. That's, uh, but, that's important. But to me, this is one where if you've got a strong opinion, uh, you just go with it. And it doesn't, matter what, it doesn't matter what anybody else is betting anyway. That's all. The, to me, the sharp square debate right. is all about whether you have conviction in your own stuff to just ignore it, which is, which is what I do. I, I could not possibly care less what other people are playing in college football. No, I agree. And I'm uh, right now 22-10 and 10 over a pregame on college football, so I'm having a pretty good year. Being selective, play a lot more games myself, but won't involve, uh, you know, the other folks that are buying the plays unless I'm, you know, it's something that I think is a pretty substantial play for them to put their money on. So 22-10, and 10, I'll take it. Again, limit it. But uh, college hoops right around the corner, Dave. That starts a week from Friday, and I know you and I will be uh, ready to go. In games. fact, as we're taping this, uh, 
Uh, I imagine a lot of folks are swinging out of the Thomas and Mech for an exhibition tonight as the Running Rebels uh, are taking on Florida National. Not Florida, Florida, National. Not Florida International. <laughs> uh, this is Florida National. I don't know anything NAIA about that. NAIA school, yeah. Yep. NAIA school. All right, well, this is going to be my free play, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make it official. And I, you know, I can take that Herman Munster square head and put it on because I'm on Duke. I don't care. I watch this Syracuse offense. I will not bet them. I don't care if they win. If they win, they win. It's going to probably be ugly. But Hunt actually had potential. He could run the ball real well. He can't throw the ball worth a lick. Uh, he actually has a pretty good arm, but he's not accurate. He's, uh, you know, 50% quarterback as far as throwing the ball. But they do have athleticism, and they do have decent runners, and they do have a solid defense. But I like Duke's all-around team chemistry, their makeup, their coach. And uh, Crowder, I think, is one of the better receivers in the country. This kid, again, you, you know, you go to Duke and you're playing football, nobody's going to know about you outside of, you know, Durham, North Carolina. Maybe a couple folks from the ACC, but very few people are going to know about Duke, going to know about basketball, but not about the football team. When you look at Shaq Powell, Josh Sneed, you have adequate running game. Boone is a, is a guy that mixes it up. He's got a good arm. Again, he's not real accurate at times himself, but uh, he's got a strong arm and he's making good, solid decisions. I like him. I think he'll get the first down when you need it, a third and four. I know he's a dual threat, and he's been uh, better than I thought he was going to be here uh, this season. Blackney, uh, Blakeney and uh, McCaffrey, uh, both pretty good as well as far as receiving core to give Crowder some help over there. Um, also, Sirk. Uh, their other quarterback is a pretty good rusher, so they'll bring him, bring him in sometimes. He's got seven rushing touchdowns as well. If Duke can win this game, Virginia Tech, North Carolina, Wake Forest, they all go to Durham. That's how Duke finishes the season. This is big because they can get an opportunity to take on Florida State in the championship game of the ACC. For the Cuse, A.J. Long will get the start. Again, uh, Tyson Prince Gully, he's been their main go-to guy as far as the offense, but he only has one touchdown overall. Again, the Cuse, they just don't score a lot of points. So at the end of the day, as fired up as Syracuse is going to be, and I don't know how fired up that'll be with a 3-6 and six record, 4-5 and five against the number, not too bad, but uh, still going to take my shot on Duke. A better team, 7-1, and one, like Dave said. They've only lost one time in their last 15, 16 games, whatever it is, and they're solid 13-3-1 and one in their last 17 against the number. So if it's a square play, I'll live with it. If I lose, great, but my money's already there. I got it. I got Duke minus three. You can still catch threes. They're all over Vegas. There's some three and a halfs. Don't get the three and a half if you want Duke. Make sure you lay the three. Yeah, that number will go back up, I would think, on Saturday. I think the, uh, the shops have already gotten their bets in at the higher price right? And because uh, the number was higher than, than where it is now. And I would think that it might creep back up on game day. All right. Well, Dave Koken, he's going to have his college play. We've got three more videos, one more college, then two NFL plays after that. But Dave's going to take a look at Penn State going to Indiana. He'll give you his play coming up next, pregame.tv.